All right, guys, I'm going to talk about rifle slings today because I've been asked by several people to talk about how I ran a sling on an AR-15 style rifle. And I have a couple different slings here today that I'm going to show you that I use. Uh, I'm going to give you the reasons why I use them and why I don't use other types. I'm going to talk about attachments and uh, attaching points, where those are. I'm going to talk about adjustability in the sling, both while shooting and moving. I'm going to talk about my kit configuration and how I need to manipulate my rifle around my kit when I'm doing other tasks other than having my hands on my gun shooting or at the ready. Let me first mention that uh, a good friend of mine, Pete, the owner of War Dog Surplus in Southern Pines, North Carolina, has allowed me to use his spacious accommodations and awesome... Uh, background decorating and, and whatnot to do these videos. Without further ado, let's talk slings. What I have here is I've got two types of slings on both of these rifles. Prior to starting this video, both of these rifles and the pistol were both cleared and double checked by more than one set of eyes. So all you Nazis on weapon safety, take a breath and drink some whiskey. Let me continue. All right, first, I'm gonna talk about the VTAC, dual point adjustable sling, which is my favorite sling by Viking Tactics. I use this on, I don't know how many hits, uh, a lot, multiple years, multiple rotations in combat, as well as in training. This is the padded version. I also had some unpadded versions. It depends on the gun it's on and how heavy the gun is based on all the accoutrement, right? All the accessories that you mount on these things uh, can make them heavier. Or if you're running a, a ready mag, an extended or a second magazine attached to your gun, makes them heavy. So I have here the VTAC. The other one I'm going to talk about here is the Magpul variant, which I've got since I've been retired. It's also another dual point adjustable sling that I like. Uh, so I'm going to talk about it. But let's talk about attachment points and where those are, where I prefer them. You've got several options. You've got anywhere on the upper receiver, along the rail. Some people attach underneath. Some people have those little Picatinny rail offset things that attach on top. And then in the rear, your options are at the buffer tube attachment into the receiver or into the, the toe of the buttstock, either side of the buttstock. There, there's several options. I like the outside of the buttstock. I don't like it on the toe because the weapon will invert when I'm not using it. That's why I have it on the opposite side in the center. Uh, I don't like it attached close in. I'll see a lot of people have it near the chamber area where the barrel connects to the chamber and the buffer attachment area. I don't like that because of stability. In other words, if I have to climb a ladder, spider hang off a wall, climb over a rooftop, whatever, my weapon is more stable the further apart I mount my sling. It's not like flopping around and smacking into shit, and it's, it's way more stable. Um, so that's enough about the attachment points. I run a dual point adjustable sling, adjustable meaning it has this friction adapter where I can pull all the slack out and keep it tight to my body or I can have a quick release to let the slack back out. Depending on what I was doing with this rifle, if I was actively moving and clearing or searching or engaging in a shoot uh, gunfight, I would run all slack out completely loose and around my neck. I would not run my arm through it normally. Sometimes I did, it depends on the situation because I needed the option to push all the slack out if I needed to uh, switch sides and change to minimize my exposure shooting on my non-dominant side. <clears throat> so the adjustability is nice because if I'm not shooting and I need to go hands-on something, I would run my shoulder through the sling, take all that slack out, and then I would sling this gun, being aware of my muzzle direction, on my back and I could climb ladders, I could climb walls, rooftops, spider hang, process detainees, stuff and cuff, what have you. And then when I needed my gun again, I simply sling it back, 
and then let the slack out of the sling, like so. All right, that's the V-Tag, Viking Tactics. Magpul makes a sling. They probably make a few now. This one's kind of old. I think this was their first generation dual point adjustable sling. But it's the same concept. It's just wider uh, webbing, nylon webbing. There's no padding, but it is, it spreads the load out more over a wider surface. Same thing, opposite side on the buttstock, near side on the front of the receiver. My switches are jumping off on me over here because I didn't uh, zip tie them down. Now, the only difference here is the, how you adjust it. It has this friction buckle. So if I need to take the slack out, I just grab it and I take all the slack out, like so, right? And I still sling the gun if I need to, or if I need to take the slack back out, just like so. Dual point adjustable sling and the adjustability. Now we're gonna talk about kit configuration. In this plate carrier. I put a few pouches and magazines on here just to kind of give you an idea of the space you need to work around. This is not how I configure my kit when I was a working soldier or operator. I had a little, few more things on my kit. All right, so I've got a couple issues, right? I've got some stuff to work around. It's going to make my profile larger. I also got a pistol to kind of be aware of on my hip. I'm going to go with the VTAC since that's what I use the most. Make sure all the slack is out. And I'm going to sling it over. Now this kit's going to take up more of that slack, and that's fine. There's ways to adjust that when you get these things. I've cut mine, but when you get them, you set them up to the length you want, and you can either trim it or you can just S-fold it and tape it or whatever with the excess webbing. These are cut. So this is kind of how I ran mine, and it's perfect for running arm out or if I need to do work with the arm in. And that's nice and snug right there. It's not going anywhere. All right, what I was talking about, slinging the gun on my back. Take all the slack out, work my muzzle direction, and sling it on my back. And when I need it, I pull it up, and I let the slack out, release the friction adapter. And now I'm ready to run and gun or whatever. Clear a room, clear a building. I'm gonna talk about other sling types. This is a dual point adjustable sling. You've also heard of single point slings. And when I was a new Green Beret, new SF guy, I thought it was cool and I wanted to have all the new cool guy gear and all the kit. And I saw pictures of single point slings which, which looked pretty rad. So I bought one and tried it and I discovered that they're horrible and they're not functional whatsoever Unless you stand on a flat piece of ground all day and that's all you do is stand on ground and you don't run around a lot. If you're running and gunning, climbing, walls, you know, doing, practicing agility for certain types of negotiating obstacles and whatnot, they're garbage, right? They're cool for taking sexy pictures like Navy SEALs or whatever, but that's about it. Single point slings, I don't recommend. I think they're trash. And that's my opinion. So... If you have any questions about sling configuration and sizing, attachment points, where to attach, kit configuration, dual point, single point, adjustability, manipulation around your kit, how to sling it when you're shooting, how to switch sides and sling it, hit me up in a DM or in the comments below. So have a good one. Stay dangerous, baby.